Here are the controls of your new Skoda Kodiak. Due to COVID, uh, the procedure for handovers has changed slightly, whereas we we'll now email you the video of your controls rather than actually sitting in the vehicle next to you, which is something you can relay back to whenever you need. So down on the right hand side, we have your lights, which are automatic. So if you do need your fog lights, you pull out once for your front, twice for your rear. Then we've got down by your foot, we've got the uh, boot opening uh, and closing. So you just push it, pull it oh, no. when the engine's on, should I say, which is your start button ignition just here, which is next to the, uh, the steering wheel. So if you push it once, that will turn your ignition and your lights on. To start the engine, you press the button with your foot on the brake to start the car. So once your ignition's on, you can then open the back boot from the inside and close it again as well, just by lifting up that button. So you keep your finger on it when you're shutting it until it locks all the way in place and you hear the loud clunk. Your door mirrors and your windows, so you flick it from the right to the left, move the cursor any way you need to. You can fold them in manually as well, I say manually, automatically if you need to. And then once you've set it, leave it round here, which is your, your heated setting. So we've got your, your push-pull accelerators and we've got your handball control on there as well, same as what you're used to. Windscreen wipers are on the right, so automatic is the first setting and you can control the wiper speed or you can go up higher speed or not uh, fast. Pull towards you is the jets at the front, push away from you is the wiper, push away even more is the water at the back. The right hand side is your cruise control, so we've got your, speed, uh, your indicators as well your full beam or flash towards and then you've got your cruise control so if you turn it on it then comes up in your eye line get up to the speed you want to do and press the bottom one which is set and you can increase the speed or decrease the speed if you brake or accelerate you can then resume back to what you was doing you can temporarily cancel it and resume back to what you was doing but if you turn it off and then on again you have to set it Trip computer information, so this is all for your, your trip, your little trip here in your eye line. So if you use the scroll button while you're in driving data, you can scroll through all of the different pieces of information about your car. Most popular one tends to be the instant speed readout. This button down here on the side of the menu, which will allow you to change what you see in your eye line, whether it's what's going on with the car, your phone, your radio, your sat nav, what assistance systems you've got, which is this button here as well, which is your speed adjustment, your cruise control, speed limiter and front assist, and back to your driving data. Just turn your cruise off because that gets your mileage up at the top. There it is. Then you've got your speed, uh, your speed over here as well, your analog speed, your fuel, your rev counter and your temperature. This little symbol here will disappear after about 30 seconds. That's just showing you you've got the front assist on this car, which will break if anything shoots out in front of the vehicle while you're doing over 18, 19 miles an hour. So in here, you've got one-handed bottle openers, somewhere to actually put your key while you're traveling around. You've got your 12 volt amp uh, holder. You can flip it over and have a mat and you can cover it over with your armrest as well, which you can also lift up at different heights. And then you just lift it back up and then you can put it back down if you need. You can set the height of the steering wheel and the reach. So you pull that lever down and the steering wheel will come out as well as up and down. You've got your volume controls, so you've got volume up and volume down, or push into mute, and in between your radio stations. 
Voice control will allow you to control certain features of the car, which of course use at your own peril. Horns in the middle. Then down in the middle we've got your electric parking brake, which of course you never need to turn off, you just drive. Lift up to apply if you wish, but it will apply it automatically when you turn the engine off. Your auto hold, that's grand if you're driving around, which will save you from having to sit with your foot on the brake for any period of time. So once you come to a, ju a, ju a junction and you've stopped the car, as long as your parking brake is green, then you can actually take your foot off the brake. So this must be highlighted if you want to use that function. When you're parking, turn it off, otherwise it's a nightmare. Mode button, if you press that, it will come up on the screen. So you then pick and choose what efficiency you want out of the car and you can tailor it individually as well. Your gears, so it's always button in to actually change the gear. You can't do anything until the green foot pedal light has gone out and the way to do that is to push the brake. Then you can slide the gears down. Your reverse will then show your front and your rear parking sensors as a graph on the screen and you'll see them light up and getting closer and you'll hear it audibly as well. Then you've got drive and sport. So initially you'll be in drive, so D1. If you want a quicker getaway, you can tap it down. You don't need to hold the button in for this. Tap it down between drive and sport and then it will take you into S1 tap it down again and it'll take you into D1. You can do that while you're driving, don't need to be stopped for that. Uh, you can also control it manually by knocking it over to the left, going up the gears or down the gears. But if you're ever unsure, just leave it in auto and away you go. Extra storage in the front along with charging your phone and your 12 volt amp socket as well. All modern cars have got a start-stop system now, which works exactly the same way with all of them. Your parking sensors, which you can then bring back up on the screen here if you want to use them, but they will come on automatically. Hazards, door lock and unlock. This will just show you whether your passenger airbag is on or off every time you start the car. Then we've got your heater system. So the middle one's your fan speed. The end ones are your temperature controls. If the passenger wants a different temperature, they can do. But if you want to control the whole car, make sure sync is pressed and then you control both sides. Your aircon is here. Auto takes it away from where you've directed it to and sends it where it thinks it needs to go. And then of course you've got your direction buttons at the top here with your heated front seats, three heat settings on both front seats. And then you turn off rest so once the heater heating system's got up to temperature when you get out of the car if you press rest it will continue to kick the heat into the car so it keeps the car nice and warm while you pop to the shop heated rear maximum blast up your front screen and then until you get used to these buttons down here when, when it's dark at night if you press menu you can actually control it all up here which has proven to be very very helpful so again, you've got your temperature controls either side, and then you can sync, you can do them separately. The dot in the middle will allow you to change the fan speed, where you want it directed to, with your aircon as well. Then we've got your stereo system, so your on button is down here. And then if we go into menu, radio, so station list will allow you to pick and choose which area you want to select from. So you've got all of these different areas to choose from. So you go into one, find one that you want, press the back arrow button, find what, I've already got the heart aces on there, press and hold it until you hear a beep and it will store on there for you and then once you press your arrow buttons here that will take you up and down all of your favorite presets rather than you having to press each individual square on the screen here 
We'll set your phone up before you go, so don't worry, we'll do that on the day. Media is what you're listening to, so you press source. Now you've got the CD player, your SD cards, your USB stick or music off your phone. Now to get to your CD player, it's in your glove box. So you've got a CD player in here, SD cards and a SIM card slot as well if you wish to allow people in the car to connect to the internet you can use a pay-as-you-go sim got a double glove box which also opens the top glove box as well vehicle which is where you can tailor all of the settings of the vehicle to how you want it to perform with you things like uh, your opening and closing do you want just a single door to open? Do you want all of the doors to open? Uh, time and date, never has it been easy to change the time and date before. Just one tick for winter and tick for summer. You might find a lot of this you won't use. It's just showing you a, a brief video of uh, some of the features of the car for you. Skoda Connect is free for the first year, but uh, say so we'll have a chat when you get here to see how much technology you're going to be using in the car as to whether it's going to benefit you. Sat nav, motion sensitive buttons at the bottom so when your hand is not being used near the screen they disappear to give you the big sat nav screen. Put your hands up, they appear. So new destination. There are other ways you can search for an address, but this proves to be the most popular. So I'll show you this one and then I will show you another way. So always click in the last address that is showing in city, because that will show you your last address that you popped in there. Now you can either put in the city, then OK, and it'll ask you the street name, then the number, or you can go straight into postcode. And always click into ABC first. Select the address, click start, the routes are being calculated. and it'll ask you for the most efficient, the fastest or the shortest journey. Please select a route. Once you've selected that route, it then comes up in your eye line to tell you which way you've got to go, what time you're going to get there and how many miles you've got left before you, you get your complete. Handy little feature for this one, once you've got your route set up, if you go into congestion ahead, you can actually set 10 miles check of any traffic jams, which will then redirect you off the route and then back onto the route again, so you don't have to sit in any traffic, which is absolutely incredible. Points of interest will show you the local petrol stations around, so if you're out and about and you, you want to know where the, the local Morrisons or Sainsbury's Garage are because they tend to be the, the better price ones at the moment. You can click on your petrol stations. Oh, no. There we go. And it will search around and it will list for you all of the local petrol stations about uh, when it does. Uh, petrol stations. And we might be too far away from the side of the road here. Don't want to use that we'll do we'll try that again tomorrow you've got your volume announcement uh, uh, navigation volume. navigation announcement volume uh, button just here uh, and to stop a route you then click on route stop route guidance so then it will bring back new destination so if you want to search a different way you press the flag and then you can go into point of address uh, point of interest or address that one tends to be a bit trickier to, to get in a lot of people have said they haven't been able to put the address in in that one online point of interest search uh, points of interest on your route and actually pinpointing on a map as well but so the second one tends to be the easiest traffic alerts so that will give you all of the live traffic message centers as uh, what's going on with the car uh, before you actually take a journey Smart Link will allow you to plug your phone in using the original cable that come with the phone to use certain apps from your phone on the dash. 
Media Command will allow somebody in the car using an iPad connected to the, uh, the Wi-Fi to control certain features of the car, should you wish. You can have a slideshow of your favourite pictures, only when you're stationary. Your sound settings, your air conditioning, which you can get into by pressing menu, and all of your system settings as well. And back into radio. And when it's off, well, that's just a mute, press and hold to turn it off. You've then got three selection choices of clocks as well, depending on which one you fancy. So to switch the engine off, you always need to make sure you press this button and you always want to see that, uh, that message come up in your eye line. Check safe lock. If that doesn't come up, then you probably haven't turned the engine off and the stop start system has kicked it in. So when you lock the car, the best way to check if the car is locked is to have a look if the door mirrors have folded in or not. We also have your rear view extended mirror fitted already. You've got these three buttons in your roof lining as well. SOS is literally only to be pressed in the uh, event of any accidents. Uh, if you do need uh, emergency services, that's what that button is for. Uh, and breakdown is the middle one, but that is for retail customers. So you would contact your own uh, motability breakdown assistance if you need it. And the I is for customer services. Just show you a few of the features outside. You've got your umbrella in the doors in the in the front and the passenger driver and passenger. Your electric seats. So whichever way you want the seat to move, this is the base. So you can slide it forward, slide it back, push it down, bring it up, and you can angle it as well. So whichever way you need. This is your back angle. So it's either forwards or back. And then you've got two buttons which will push out for your lumbar support and two will pull back in. Once you've got your seat where you want it, you press and hold the set button for a few seconds, then press and hold the number. So then if anybody does move your seat, all you do is press and hold the number and it will take you back to what you've stored it at. Your door lock and unlock. So as long as you've got your key on you, you never need to worry about locking the car. All you do is you touch the back of this sensor here and your door mirrors will fold in. That's the best way to tell if your car is locked. To open the car, you touch the inside of the door handle and that will unlock the car. Now, if there's more than one of you getting in the car, you need to do that twice consistently in order to open all of the doors. So if somebody grabs the handle after the first grab, it resets and you have to do it all again. So wait, make sure the other people getting in the car wait until they hear the second plunk. So if I just lock the car again, and then you hear the second clunk, the second flash on the indicator, and that will open all of the doors for you. So your parcel shelf is laying on the back, because of course we've got your, your hoist fitted in already. You can fold these seats down if you need to. Uh, they will slide forwards and backwards as well by lifting the bar underneath. Oh, bear with me, I'm just going to have to put the iPad down. So they will slide forwards and backwards to give extra room in the back or if you need extra space down at the bottom. And whoever's in the back can also recline so they can lift that and of course when the, the, the scooter's not in there you may be able to recline it. You've got your armrest in the middle and you've also got a 12 volt amp socket in the back as well to allow anybody to charge the phone up. Your petrol cap locks with a car so you just push it from the left side you'll have a lovely ice scraper in here which also is a magnifying glass for your tyre pressures and there's no keys or messing around, it's just unscrew 
and in she goes. And then your boots. So you can either use the soft touch, which is just under here, or you can use the key. So if you press and hold the key button on the boot, that will actually open your boot up. So we've got your, your scooter and your hoist already in there, which is fantastic. And then when you're not using your scooter, you've got your little shopping bag hooks either side as well. So save you having to repack everything when you get home. And of course, under there, you've got the, the two extra seats for the seven seater as well. Now you can set the height of the boot. So you've got this button just here. So if you want to set the height, if you're going to a multi-story car park, press it where you want the height to be. So you can have it slightly lower rather than really high. Press and hold the button until you hear that beep. And then every time you open the boot, it will open to where you have set it. If you do want to have the, the full height of the boot, just then make sure it's pushed all of the way back up. So it was almost level before. And then press and hold until you hear the beep. And that is stored. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video and find it helpful. And I look forward to seeing you tomorrow.